Okay, what we're doing today, um, actually over the next three days, uh, this video is going to kind of be uh, back and forth between the other side and this side, driver and passenger side on the rear wheel bearing, because I've been doing this for three days. <laughs> not because it's a super tough job, it's, it's not that bad, and it pertains to almost all the Mercedes built between like 84 and the mid-2000s. Anything with the five-link rear suspension is basically going to be the same essentially there's gonna be a few differences as in stuff to take off that's in your way and everything they're all going to be different but um uh anyway the hardest part for me for the other side when i was doing uh like i said i've got some of that filmed and some of this is going to be filmed hardest part was removing the um drive shaft bolts into the drive shaft carrier uh they are a um an e-torx headed bolt and these really strip easily um they're in there they're loctited in there they've been in there for 15 years um not a fun thing to take out can't use heat because the cv boot is right there uh so you can't put a torch on them because you'll just burn the cv boot rubber up uh also on that side <laughs> you're talking gas lines so uh the fuel filter fuel tank uh, all the fuel lines are over there on that side so you can't really use heat um not a lot of fun i had to resort to, to lightly cutting off uh, the heads of some of the bolts and then pull the drive shaft out and then once that's out um you've no longer got the boot there you can cover everything else up in wet uh, towels and heat up the bolts that stick out of the carrier and uh, get those off but it was a two-day nightmare to get six bolts off it really sucked um Anyway, I'm using an FAG bearing kit. Um, it comes with the entire kit of uh, the bearing. Uh, the bearing is not out here because it's in the freezer. If you're doing this, your bearing should be in the freezer for five, six, seven hours. Might have been in the freezer for two days, so it can be good and cold. Um, so this has got all the extra bolts, the, the new uh, e torch bolts. Um, brake disc caliper bolt and some other stuff and anyway i'm pulling the bolt um i'm going to take the wheel and tire off uh, i'm going to take the brake assembly off hang it up the caliper and um uh the rotor um uh, uh, the emergency brake rotor and drum which is one assembly in the back and uh we'll start from there um yeah back in a few minutes Okay, you're going to have to excuse two things today. It's a little overcast, and one of my neighbors is playing lumberjack, so it's going to interfere with sound all day, and I pre-apologize. <laughs> so for the rotor, there is a... There's a lock screw on the rotor and, and drum assembly that holds on the rotor. It's a 5 millimeter. Um, Allen headed bolt. So take that off and then two 60 millimeter bolts for the caliper and the caliper is being held. You don't have to remove the whole thing. It's just being um, held in place with a bungee cord. So now the inner brake, a good time to check your inner brake, parking brakes too. And these shoes are good, but everything's gonna get greased up when it gets put back on. First thing you wanna remove is the little jar, star adjuster wheel. And you can simply Take a pair of needle nose, pull up and down. Oh crap, this one's a little in there. Note which way is up, the little wheel points to up. This is the adjuster screw, and there's the little socket it sits in. There's two notches, those go in the two notches on the brake uh, shoe. The other side, the brake shoe doesn't have notches. It's got two little C-clips for the other side, C-grooves for the other side. So once that's out, you can push the pads together and pull the little spring off. And this is the spring that the star wheel hits and holds so it doesn't continue to move on its own. It just kind of hits against the side there and stops from moving. So. Slide the spring out. Come on. For 
some reason, someone has put this brake spring on from the back. Usually they're put on from the front, which makes them a heck of a lot easier to remove. As you can see, the spring is looped from the back. Usually, as I said, they're looped from the front as the bottom spring is. So anyway, I'm going to remove that little spring. It might take me a few minutes and be back in a second. Okay, little spring has been taken out. And now there's two retainer springs that go through the center of the brake shoe. That spring right there. And essentially there is a, there's a little straight piece there and you're just gonna grab it with your, hope this isn't too shaky, I have to hold this because I can't take it too close. Grab with your needle nose, push and turn a quarter turn and that will pop it. Oops. I'm gonna have to do it a couple of times because there's a little hook on the back. There we go. And that's what the back side looks like. So basically you put it in sideways and it's gonna go a quarter turn to hold. And that's the same to remove. It's this way, so you push in and pull out. Anyway, I'm gonna do that. The bottom, oh, I'll also do the bottom brake, shoot. The spreader. Okay, so I have to take the spring clip off the bottom one as well. pop off with the spring attached and then this is the emergency brake mechanism I'm going to pull out that out and if this pin wants to come out on the inner one we'll take it out if not we'll leave it there because you don't want to lose it it does have a habit of coming out the brake mechanism and when that's on it's usually in between there so the pin can't pop in and out that's why it's not retained in with anything because it's usually in there okay and I'm gonna recharge this camera because it's almost dead and we're gonna restart we're gonna start on the uh, e-torx bolts that are on the uh, the drive shaft. Oh, first let's might as well take off the center nut. It's on there at 160 foot pounds. And the impact will take that right off. We're going to be cleaning this all up and painting these uh, brake backing plates just because we're in here. Might as well do it. Anyway, back in a minute. Okay, just a quick look underneath so I can't get any further back because I'm under the car. Um, this is the rear drive shaft where it connects. So this is the driver's side one where it connects to the uh, the differential. And as you can see, there's six, there's three and three. Each of them have a little, uh, it's like a, a, <laughs> a three hold, hold arm. that's like a, a brace for holding the, the half shaft in. And those bolts are the biggest bugger in the world to get out. Um, make sure your socket, the only thing I can tell you is make sure your socket is dead on them and uh, don't try to use impacts, anything like that, because it's just going to strip them. 
Um, I've got one up there, the top one that you can see the furthest up one. That one is stripping. The other five, oddly enough, are loose and they're going to come out okay. And that one's going to have to be cut off, which is no big deal. Um, but it's just a pain to cut it in that position. Obviously, you can re spin the uh, spin the axle to get them down in the proper position. And on the uh, I'm just sticking a socket extension through the bolt, the hole in the hub, not the lug nut hole with the threads in it. Don't there's six other big holes, and then it's braced against the uh, the brake pad rest, and that keeps it from spinning. While you're putting, sorry for the bumps. <laughs> While you're putting torque on those nuts, and anyway, you got to pull those off, and that is the next step. So until that is done, nothing else can be filmed. So I will be back. Okay, finally got all those bolts out, axle shaft removed. <laughs> I had gloves on at the beginning, um, and now I'm just pulling the hub bearing out, uh, and that is going to require a. Um, Slide hammer. Sorry, I just got off one of the car. Brain farted. Um, anyway, slide hammer. I'll just set this up. You can watch me do it a couple of times, but it's going to take a while. I'm going to do that for the next 10 minutes or 5 minutes. So, anyway, I'm not going to bore you with watching that uh, back in a second. Okay, after about 15, 20 minutes of pounding, <laughs> this is what comes out, the race, outer race attached to the hub. And there's the inner part of the puller, which I still have to pull off. And now we start the whole fun over again to pull the main bearing out. Same deal, uh, bigger attachment on the back of the puller, and start all over again. Actually, first I have to move the C-clip. Um, anyway, back in a second. Okay, now to the bearing seat clip on the outside here. A lot of times, after several years, those are going to be rusted in there and just grabbing them with a seat clip uh, pliers is not going to work. So, tapping on the clip, tap toward the open, like tap it pinched closed, don't tap the other way, it'll just get tighter, but tap it toward the, the the gap, tap each side toward the gap, and then it'll loosen up a little bit, it should allow us to grab it and get it up. Sometimes. Oh, sorry, I'm sweating like a bitch. I've been uh, pounding on this thing for 20 minutes. My arms will barely move anymore. And now I gotta do the inner bearing, the uh, main bearing. So, back at it. Um, like I said, same as the first, she's gonna attach a bearing puller to the inside of the bearing hub and poundy poundy outward. Okay, really quickly before I start. Uh, Pulling the new bearing or the outer bearing out, I'm going to remove the uh, five millimeter Allen headed bolts and pull the dust shield off uh, just to get everything up out of my way. And I want to repaint the dust shield because it's a little bit rusty. You might as well do it while you're in here. Okay, back in a minute. Whew, bearing out. That was about uh, 10 minutes of pounding. And there's the empty race. Okay, now with the hub, I'm just going to lightly sand it with a, this is like a 3,000 grit, or 2,000 grit wet and dry pad. It's going to make it smoother. In case there's any slight margin, I mean, you want this like glass to slip the new bearing in. The new bearings are in the freezer, by the way. 
where they should be for at least five, six hours. Might have been in there for like two days because it's taken two days to get to this point. <laughs> uh, as I'm going to say on this video, I'm jumping back and forth from side to side. I'm filming some stuff on this side, some stuff on the other side. Um, just because I'm doing both and sometimes I'm working late into the night. It was just a nightmare, the bolts on the, uh, the axle shaft. Uh, the first axle shaft was two days to remove uh, those e-torx bolts from the axle shaft. They were in there. They were not coming out. So uh, anyway, polishing this up and I'll press the bearing in a few minutes. So I'm rushing and doing this quickly. That bearing just came out of the freezer. It's been in there for two to three days. I'm going to use the old bearing. I'm going to use the old bearing to tap it in because it's obviously the same size. Sick of hitting my finger with an old. I'm trying to hold that bearing straight. I can use a block of wood. Once it's flush, I'm going to use the old. Bearing again to tap it all the rest of the way in. because I'm right-handed and it's hard to... <laughs> Sorry, it's hard to pound in that direction when you're right-handed. Excuse the squeaky camera noise. gets in like half a millimeter it's gonna be perfectly centered it's just like doing a bearing race you know, front wheel so I am oops, gonna finish pounding this in oh you know what I'll just leave the camera on too lazy to turn it off. And when it's all the way seated, the sound of tapping is going to sound different. Wetting my head off. Anyway. So if you see this little bit of orange in there, that's not from the seal. There was orange paint on that block of wood and that's what that is. So I'm gonna grab the C-clip and pop that in back in a minute. Okay, there it goes an hour of my time. <laughs> so. Snap ring, snap ring pliers. Oh no, don't tell me this is <laughs> not gonna stay on. Come on, baby. Crap, I 
hate these giant snap rings. I am gonna lose a finger here. <laughs> And you'll notice I've got the brake dust shield off because I took it off to clean it off and paint it. Okay, this is now like day five working on this because we've had crappy weather, I had bolt problems, blah, 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 in and out. And now I'm back, on, I'm on the other side. I showed, or will in some point in the video, show how I put the hub on, uh, press the hub in on the other side, which was tap it in about a centimeter and then use the axle shaft to pull it in. And this, I'm just gonna show a different method using a threaded rod. It's just a 5 8 threaded rod with a bolt on the back, washers holding, and basically on a bearing. When you're putting a hub bearing in, sorry, this is dirty, it's been on the ground. Um, you want to have hold this on the back while you're pressing in from the front. You want equal pressure on both sides. That's why you don't hammer them, because you'll hammer and it'll go halfway through, and once it hits this half, it'll just pop that half out. That's why you don't hammer bearings like this in. You have to press them, and they should be supported from the back. On the other side, I supported it from the back with the axle shaft, which went through and held on to the hub. Uh, the hub, you know, the spline poked through and it was holding from the back and then pulled it on with the, uh, the center nut. This way, I've got a washer that is this size on the back with a nut on the back of the threaded rod that goes through. And then I'm just simply, well, I'm holding the nut with a, the nut on the back I'm holding with this wrench and then just cranking it through. Oops, you there. There you are. Actually, it's resting on the suspension, so it's fine. And where is my... Tiny bit of WD-40 on there. Make sure it slides in nice. take this off now and then the hub will pull it the rest of the way through. Come on. Anyway, I'm sure you don't want to watch me put this, <laughs> take this whole nut off. I'll show you this, the thingy I'm using when I get it out in two seconds. So I'll, I'll come back to it. And the only bit of a bitch with this one is I don't have a super deep 24 millimeter socket. So I have to keep when I get it tighter, I have to loosen the whole bolt and move the shaft back, mo loosen the front and back bolts and move it up so I can get a socket on it because I can only get about two or three centimeters worth of hub movement in on it. So I'm going to press this in and I'll show you in a second. Sorry, my camera shut off for a second for some reason. This is the part that pops off with the hub. It's going to come off with the hub. It's the outer part of the race. And that goes in there and as you can see it's two parts see the line down the middle and again hammering it if you hammered it you could tap it in the first little bit you can tap it in because these this can't go past the bearing the ball bearings you can tap it in the first like half centimeter but then you're going to need to press it in straight because once it gets to the middle if you hammer on it and there's nothing on the back to support it it's going to pop this out the same way this pops out and you're not going to be happy you should have to replace your whole bearing again and anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I'm just going to reassemble those. Uh, have I shown it on the other side? I'll show you reassembling the rear drum brakes uh, or the parking brake back in a second. 
Okay, so now we're at the point of re reinstalling the rear brake shoes, the parking brake shoes, which are a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, but you don't need any special tools uh, to do it. Um, <laughs> just a little persistence and a pair of needle nose pliers. Um, one thing about the little spreader here that pulls and acts on when the, the brake cable is pulled, this spreads the shoes. Make sure when you put it back in, because you can get it turned upside down, make sure the pin in the two is on top. There's a center pin that pulls on that as well that's attached to the cable, but the pin that holds these two halves together. So where it is hooked together and the opening is, is that way, so it pulls this way. There's a little arm there that keeps it the, the mechanism from going out. Um, that's toward the outside of the shoe and the pin. If you got the pin on top, you're fine and the, um, the cable attached. <sighs> so now the fun part. Your brake shoes have two ends to them. They have a single hump. Like It's like, just think of it like a camel, single and double hump. Uh, there's two ends and both are the same. Both ends with the opening in them like this. The slot are going to go toward the adjuster because they go into this little slot in the adjuster. So I'm going to do this one side first. Oh, I need a different pair of ice grips. Hold on a second. Or, uh, you know those. Take your little spring pin that holds the the retainer that holds the the brake shoes on. This is the same for removing them. I don't know if I filmed that or not, but if I didn't, grab them in the uh, in the pair of needle nose. Grab the little rod that goes down the middle, and then insert the hook sideways. Push in, and as you push in, the spring won't be able to go past the wider part of the needle nose, so you'll be compressing the spring line up one of the big holes in the hub. You're just going to push through, making sure it's lined up. Come on. Push through, turn, one quarter turn, and release. And they're stuck on there. And make sure the pad is touching, uh, the shoe is touching this metal stopper here. And then slide the spreader into there. Same with the bottom. We're going to pop that one on. Apologize for the video length, but I'm just going to keep filming. If you want to see how it's done, you want to see how it's done. If you don't, fast forward. Doesn't really matter. And again, grab the spring. Pop it into the spreader. Through and turn. That's on. Now we're not going to worry about the back spring right now because the mother of all mothers, the front spring has to get hooked up. So give me one second. I'm going to grab something else to make this a little easier and back in a second. Okay, now here is a bit of the tricky bit the trickiest part of the whole thing. This spring push up from underneath and it's got to go on the back side of that spreader so it's got to go to the inner part of the hub from the spreader and then you've got the spring hanging down and now you have to attach it to the bottom shoe which is about that far away and it's a bitch of a spring to move. So, oh crap I did this backwards. <laughs> anyway, I put two of the lug, the, the lug studs back on with a wrench so that I can apply some pressure. And which way do I want to go? I want to go this way. So I'm going to grab through this hole the spring, the top of the spring. It's going to go down toward the bottom. The shoe. I want to grab onto it. And then using leverage 
pull the spring forward until it pops. and hooks into the hole, the bottom hook there. You can see it's barely holding on, so I'm gonna poke that with a screwdriver. And hopefully, it goes all the way in without popping back out. Do not pop back out. Thank you. Okay, so that's the simple way of applying a little bit of pressure, so that's the spring that holds these two pads together, or the shoes. Make sure they're centered on this metal piece. The, the, the end of the shoe is centered on there. So now we have to do the back piece and my camera's running out so let me charge this thing for two more minutes so I'll have enough time. It's a really quick job. Back in a second. Well of course it's beginning to rain again today. Why, why the hell wouldn't it? Okay so I've taken the adjusting wheel that I pulled out uh, when we pull out the brakes. Took it apart. It's three pieces. It's the little cup that the wheel spins in. And then the adjuster, the screw adjuster, that screws down into the wheel. So when these two are stationary and the wheel spins, it moves the adjuster in and out. And that little wheel spins. And it's held in place by the spring, the rear spring, which is a little sucker like this. And it goes in between the teeth. And as you pull on the brake, that expands and slightly moves the wheel back and forth. Hopefully you can see that. So first thing I'm going to put on is the adjuster wheel, uh, teeth going toward the top. These two slots in the pads go into the slots on the bottom and top. Pretty self-explanatory. Once those are locked in, grab the spring. top in the slot and then simply where is it yeah I thought I had one again using the rotor help trick or the hub help trick I'm using a, uh, a seal pick I'm gonna pull that down this one's fairly simple. It's just a, a little bit of a pain to get down there. Not a lot. Well, I'm just going to use a screwdriver. Screwdriver, slide it over, slide it into the slot, pull down, and it will guide itself into the hole. Did it? Yes, it did. And now you're done. Now center, before putting the rotor back on and the hub, center it along the backing plate so that the, the pads, the shoes, are on that middle part of the backing plate. I'm going to grab my rotor. Where did I put my rotor? <laughs> use some brake cleaner on the shoes because I don't want the grease that I put on the other actual greased parts to come off but I don't want any grease that's possibly from my hands on the shoes slip the rotor over we're gonna put our locking screw in the five millimeter which I don't have with me back in one second crap okay so here's the retaining screw comes with Loctite pre-installed on it on the brand new ones in the in the FAG bearing kit it does anyway Why am I putting that in the wrong hole? <laughs> that always helps. 
Well, we're sitting for three days already. Rust building up on the rotors. Hate it. Actually, it's been five days sitting up here. And tighten that to about eight foot pounds. Now remember where your star wheel was. Back in here. Flashlight's gonna help. Star wheel adjuster. I'm not going to be able to show you this. It's through the, the one lug hole. You're going to use a small flat headed screwdriver or anything. You're just, you're just going to poke the little teeth on the uh, the gear. Uh, poke it. You probably have to unwind it a little bit until it connects with the, when you can feel it connecting with the hub when you're getting a little bit of um, resistance. Back off uh, one or two and 